Hello, humans, and welcome to another episode of Gen X Gamer. Let's talk about Sweet Baby Ink, but not in the manner that you're used to hearing these videos, right? Where they're just <laughs> attacking them for A, B, or C. I want to get down to something more meaningful, which is their philosophy, and specific, the philosophy of the CEO, and something that she said in her talk that is completely wrong, and it's wrong in so many levels. And their philosophy, and if that's your philosophy out there, this video is for you, actually. If you disagree with my point of view, this video is for you. If you love what Sweet Baby Inc. does and stands for, this video is for you. Now, when people hear videos that are critical about Sweet Baby Inc., they, they assume, right, they're, they're just assume they're done by people who don't have the experience, who don't have a clue, X, Y, and Z, yada, 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 right? There's some sort of, you know, far right-wing uh, person out in the fringes out there or some person that doesn't understand or an old, older person that doesn't see the new point of view of the new generation, whatever the heck that means. Well, let me tell you, I am a minority, right? And I have experienced uh, racism, not only from white people, <laughs> but from... Uh, Latin people, by Asian people, I've experienced in, in different ways because I've been in different places and, and traveled. One big mistake that a lot of people that see the world and see the world in, in the political point of view that Sweet Baby Inc. does is that they have this notion that all minorities are special. Just because your, your skin is darker or because you happen to be Asian, or because you happen to be Hispanic, or, or whatever, that makes you special. Nothing could be further from the truth. There are bad people everywhere. You just need to travel there. You just need to have that experience. Now, let me give you a couple of examples. I've been to places in these United States where we were not denied service, but a very delayed service. <laughs> and it was very... Uh, very obvious that they were serving white people before they were serving us, right? This was in a Denny's, uh, you know, and it just, it was what it was, you know? We felt like getting up, but we made it a point to stay there and eat <laughs> just because we were pissed, right? Because these people didn't like us. I've had a more a recent experience. And when I'm telling you recent, I'm talking about weeks ago. I have a person who is a superior of mine who does not like me, right? And does not like me because I make him uncomfortable. And the reason I make him uncomfortable is not because I'm Hispanic. The reason I make him uncomfortable is because I'm a Hispanic that's smarter than him. That's why I make him uncomfortable. He's okay with a Home Depot Hispanic. He's okay with a guy selling him his tacos. He's not okay with me as a colleague. He's not okay with me having a superior knowledge of the material that we work on, right? He's not okay with that. And it killed him, right? It killed him and it kills him every time that he has to come to me to ask for help. Absolutely destroys him because it's a one time he has to be nice, right? And he has to engage with me. And I know he doesn't like me. Why do I know? Because I, I have a sixth sense? No, because he's told everybody he doesn't like me. <laughs> right? Uh, because he doesn't know, for example, he, he's not that familiar with my political leanings, for example, or my points of view on the world. And other colleagues who happen to be white tell me how he feels about me. Right? Um, and don't like him either. And not because he's white. Right? Because they're both white. They don't like him because he's an asshole. Right? And there are assholes everywhere. Being a minority doesn't make you special. Being a minority, all you have to do is travel to Mexico. There's assholes in Mexico. There's assholes in Central America. There's assholes in China. There's assholes in the Philippines. There's assholes everywhere. There's racists everywhere, right? There's racists against Hispanics, racists against Latinos, racists against uh, Chinese people, racists against everyone. That exists everywhere. It's human nature to be tribal. This point of view that this lady has is that minorities, in particular in the video game industry, are not get, getting these opportunities 
because they are minorities. Nothing could be further from the truth. It can be harder in certain instances. For example, I excel in my field because I will not be outworked, because I, I will do the work of two people, because I, I'm a workaholic. That's what makes me outstanding. That's what makes that guy bend the knee and come to me and talk to me, right? That's why I still have a job when other people have gotten laid off. It's not because I'm Hispanic. They're not keeping me because of DEI. There's plenty of Hispanics that they can keep in this company, right? It could be the janitor. It could be anybody else. But they keep me because I'm good at what I do. When you're good at what you do, you will excel because you will make people money. And when you operate in the free market, if you are good, people cannot put you down. Maybe you can say, I didn't get this opportunity because the banker didn't like me and I didn't get that loan or yada, yada, yada. Nothing is preventing you from you working out your ass out and funding it yourself. Is it harder? Yes. But will you succeed if you have a good product? Absolutely. You have uh, example after example of minorities succeeding when they are self-funded, when nobody gave them an opportunity. And when it comes to video games, it is a meritocracy. If you have a good game, you will succeed. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with the amount of money that you put into the game. You could put hundreds of millions of dollars and still flop, as we know, as these games have with Sweet Baby Inc. But they haven't flopped because people don't like them because she's a minority. They haven't flopped because of all the point, crazy points of views that these people have had online because of all the harassment. They have flopped because they are mediocre games. They have not been exceptional. Players, video games, when it comes to that, it's just an art and people will buy them and it doesn't matter who makes them. As a matter of fact, if somebody thinks that, you know, you're an a-hole and you make a great video game, the, the video game will sell even more. The, if a video game is good, you could get the worst publicity in the world. You go back to the 90s, right, and, and beyond. You could have a real bad, <laughs> uh, you know, image publicly and people will still play your game because it's good. And that's what this lady doesn't understand. Being a minority doesn't give you a leg up. The game she just worked on, Unknown 9, is mediocre. And it's all her doing, the writing, the concept. It's all her. And it's just not good enough. People are not buying it because she happens to be of a darker skin color. People are not buying it because it's not good. And it's just not the, the if you want to say, the, the, the right-wing gamers. It's the left-wing gamers, too. It's everybody. Everybody that's played this game knows it's mediocre, that the story... The things that Sweet Baby Inc. worked on are mediocre. They are not good. There's plenty of games out there that have a great storyline and mechanics aren't that good, but people love them because they love the story. If this game had that, if Sweet Baby Inc., if this lady right here would have done a great job in writing and development, the game would not have flopped as hard because people would love it just for the story. We have plenty of examples of that. But this is a meritocracy. And being a minority does not make you special. What makes you special is what you do. What you decide to get up and do every morning. Do you want to be the best at your craft? Right? Do you want to get, get up every morning and, and be the best employee at your company? Do you want to be the best writer? Do you want to be the best director? Do you want to be the best game developer? Is that what you strive for? Do you study your craft? Do you go the extra mile? Do you look at games of previous makers and, and, and get inspiration from that and take what's good from that to make your game? Do you do all those things? Or do you just get in there and just say, I'm just going to make something. And because I'm special, because I'm a minority, the game's going to be good. I'm just going to tell my story. Well, guess what? You could be a minority and your fucking story could be pretty boring. <laughs> Especially here in the U.S., you know, that's a lot of problem that, that a lot of immigrants have. You know, they've been here in the U.S. that maybe they're second, third generation, and they think they've gone through hardships, and they think their stories are going to resonate, and they put it out to other minorities. And you know what? It doesn't resonate. You know why? Because you had a life of fucking privilege. 
in the U.S. compared to their experiences in Mexico and Latin America in China or everywhere else. You don't know the opportunities that you've had that other people don't have, right? What you think is hard is light work for other people. This lady in Canada thinks that she's going through suffering of some sort. She wishes that she would know one-tenth of the suffering that other people in other parts of the world know in order to write a better story. She fails because she is mediocre. She fails because the market does not respond to the products that she's putting out. That's, it's that simple. And this philosophy that you're a minority and that makes you special and everything you put pen to paper is going to be absolutely endearing to everybody. And the only re reason it doesn't succeed, it's because there's some sort of evil force out there, you know, going on the other side, trying to block you at every turn. You know what? Everybody could say your game is absolute crap. Everybody. But if your game is good, it's going to succeed. Hogwarts Legacy is a game that succeeded despite everybody saying that it was terrible in the media. That's the power of a good game. The reason Sweet Baby Inc. doesn't succeed is because in a meritocracy, everything that's mediocre is revealed. It's a free system. Everybody gets to vote. And everybody has voted with their wallets, with their dollars, that Sweet Baby Inc. is a mediocre company that produces mediocre products. They can change that with the next game. They can shut everybody up. If they make a good game, if they work on a good game, everything will be fixed. Everything will be forgiven because when companies make money, they'll call you again. But until they put the time and effort into actually making good video games, rather than putting the effort into the messaging, right, into whatever it is that they're doing now that is not working, that's not going to change. It makes for a great story, though. But don't be like Sweet Baby Inc. Don't make excuses for yourself. Sometimes it's not that you're a minority. Sometimes it's not people that, you know, it's not that people hate you. It's just that you suck at your work, and that's okay. Everybody starts somewhere. We all start at sucking. I wasn't great at what I do on day one, right? It took me years to hone my craft in order to be good at what I do. And I'm still going to school right now to get even better. You know, 40 years after, 30 years after, whatever it is. And that's what it takes to become great. It's not your skin color. It's not where you were born. It's not where you come from. It's what you do that makes you special. All right, humans, that's it for today. I have a little bit better voice today. I've been going through it. But I'll see if I can do another one for tomorrow. I will catch you on the next one. Thank you for subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.